And Sabadra, when you take a look at the moves that we've seen in yields over the last few days and weeks here, what exactly is being priced in, in your view? The market's definitely pricing in a very aggressive policy path between now and the end of the year. We're looking at nearly 50 basis points of cuts at the November meeting and perhaps another cut at the December meeting. So uh, it's, it's uh, an outlook towards front-loading these cuts. Um, really, the main takeaway from the last FOMC meeting is that the Fed wants to front-load cuts and they want to move away from restrictive uh, policy as soon as they possibly can. And that's why I think the market is inclined to price in nearly another 50 basis point rate cut at the November meeting, even though the Fed has told us that they're only going to deliver a total of an additional 50 basis points by the end of the year in the summary of economic projections. Does it matter that, at least right now, it appears more investors are still embracing the shorter end of the curve rather than extending duration and buying out 10-year, 20- and 30-year notes? Yeah, I mean, when Fed rate cuts start getting priced in, it's more of a front-end phenomena. So that's why you're seeing the two-year rally as much as it has today. But once the Fed starts cutting rates, um, as they cut rates, that's somewhat stimulative. So you should start seeing uh, higher inflation expectations, higher term premia, and that causes the yield curve to, to steepen out. So you're seeing the two cents part of the yield curve or the five studies part of the yield curve steepen out um, because of front end yields declining as well as long end yields rising. Mm -hmm. So this is a very unusual type of price action in the bond market. Yeah, and that's what we sort of are flipping between. Like, I feel like at the end of last week, maybe we get those jumbo cuts, we see inflation, we see growth come back, and you saw the long end sell off. And now, again, it's the front end as the data uh, might come in a little weaker. How, how do you manage that kind of dynamic? Uh, carefully and patiently. I mean, <laughs> our view is that uh, the front end, at least, seems to be very efficiently priced in for a very aggressive policy path. You're looking, at, as you mentioned, Alex, at the beginning of the show, you're looking at more than 75 basis points of, of cuts uh, to, for, for this year. The market in aggregate is looking at over another additional 200 basis points of cuts between now and next year this time, after the Fed has already delivered mm -hmm. a 50 basis point rate cut last week. So this is a very aggressive uh, you know, policy path that the market's pricing in. This is not what the Fed has in its summary of economic projections. In its summary of economic projections, the Fed is looking at maybe two more cuts for this year and a cut per quarter for next year. So it's going to be really interesting to see if the Fed moves towards the market or the market moves towards the Fed mm -hmm. if uh, the economy actually starts to improve. I mean, hasn't the Fed always really moved to the market, whether we want to think so or not? <laughs> Uh, not really. I mean, during the rate hike cycle, they've, uh, you know, very masterfully got the market uh, to price in uh, the hikes that they wanted to deliver. And this time around as well, I think, uh, you know, by way of uh, Fed speak, they've been able to convince the markets that they could deliver a 50 basis point rate cut in September. And the market was almost nearly fully priced in for that. So, you know, I think it goes both ways. I think that if, the, if given how strong the economy has been that far, given the fact that they've uh, engaged in preemptive rate cuts, I think that if they do act decisively between now and the end of the year, that's actually going to be somewhat stimulative to the economy. What's the main risk, though, Sabadra, that you're keeping an eye on? Um, it's how the market reacts uh, to uh, once the Fed rate cuts are, are delivered. I mean, if we do see an increase in services at inflation, if inflation starts becoming a concern, that's something that we're watching. Uh, heading into the elections, uh, we'll be watching to see what the outcome of the elections are. I mean, the, the last time when we had a, uh, you know, a presidential win from, from Trump as well as a sweep from, uh, from the Republican Party, what we saw was higher inflation expectations and steeper curves. So mm -hmm. the elections, again, could be something that plays into the price action in the bond market. Yeah, funny though, Subhadra, uh, Moody's uh, said today that the next U.S. administration must grapple with the widening budget deficit or kind of risk the backlash from the rating agencies, right? And that's, it's like either way who wins though, can you just see that front end yield continue to climb because we're just gonna have bigger budget deficits and the need for more money? Yeah, no, the front end is definitely gonna be pegged peg to Fed expectations. Where we can see yields rise is in the long end. I think that you could see higher 10-year and 30-year yields 
if we see the trajectory for debt and deficits getting worse from here on. So if there's going to be perhaps more tax cuts coming uh, and no meaningful way of paying for those tax cuts, then the market's going to very quickly recalibrate to a much higher fiscal trajectory. And that would mean much higher long-end yields.